All right, so in finishing our posters and playing with the background, they can really compete with each other, right? You can layer up multiples, kind of like this, and get some interesting effects. But if you lose the uh, understanding of your image, <laughs> then you're not really doing yourself any favors, right? So this is, this is one technique I like to do. And all of you, you have this on your computers already built into Photoshop. This is a macro that I wrote in, in a macro is when you have a sub program that you can run inside a program. And in Photoshop, they are called actions. So an action that I'm particularly proud of that I wrote back in 1998, right? On a much older version of Photoshop that still works is, is one that separates your image into printing dots, right? And I'll show you how it works, but actions, you can find them under window. And actions, right? So open that up. You'll see a folder at the top that is default actions, and then you'll see a whole bunch that I've added in, right? And the one I'm going to use is called Carl Color Seps, right? Open up that folder, and you'll see at the bottom there's one that's CMYK Full Run. Now I'm going to do this. Make sure you've saved your Photoshop file before you do it. Yep. Because the first thing this action will do is flatten everything, right? But it will always save it as a separate file, so it won't hurt your original file. That's just the way I wrote it. Now, I think of actions like VHS tapes, right? And if you remember VHS tapes, you do not want to do this. You don't want to open them up and then play with the tape inside, right? So, but you do need to select the tape off the shelf. So the folder is like the shelf. These are all my color separation VHS tapes that you want to play. You want to select the one you want, and I want all the colors, not just cyan, not just yellow, not just magenta, not just black, but all of them together. And then, once I've selected the tape, I can play it. And then I go through and I just click yes on all of these things. Depending on how your file is set up, it will ask you certain questions. Now these are high res files, but you see already it's starting to output different new, new files like a cyan dot layer, a yellow dot layer, a magenta dot layer, a black dot layer, and then it will do one that has them all together. So this actually outputs four new files for you to use. But again, it's about problem solving. So it ends with this new file, which is called the CMYK combined dot layers file. And it intentionally offsets these different screens into different layers. So let's look at what we have. We have a blank white layer underneath. We have a cyan layer. So it separates out all of those millions of colors into just the cyan, cyan halftone dots, right? Then the magenta, but notice how the cyan and the magenta are offset, right? Because this is what's called offset printing. They are offset quite a bit. So what you need to do is then use your move tool. I just did to the white layer by mistake. And you decide how to line them up. So if I take the cyan layer should be centered. So if I take the magenta layer and I turn off auto select so I don't accidentally select another layer, I can line it up. And I can decide how perfectly aligned I want it to be. Right? It's never going to be like the dots falling exactly on the dots because that's not how offset color mixing works. Okay, now the yellow. And the yellow is pretty offset. So let me select it and move it into place. And then the black. And then the black's pretty offset. Let me move it into place. So this is like hand registering silk screens. So that is what my poster would look like with only four inks in a very, very open grid silk screen. Like really bad, like newspaper printing. It's made to look very vintage. And you can tell it's very different than this, right? 
Now, why is that useful? Well, if I just take this whole thing and I make it into a folder and put all these into the folder and I call that folder CMYK, this is actually what's called CMYK separations because it separates all your millions of colors into different ratios of cyan, magenta, yellow, and black ink. Then I take that folder, I move it out, right? And I drop it onto my original. And because I did this back in the, in the 1990s, um, Photoshop wasn't able to handle such big files. So I wrote this action to be at 300 pixels per inch, which is professional standard, instead of our lab standard, which is 350. So that just means, this is actually a good thing, you have to grow the whole folder a little bit, which actually softens the dots slightly. Because in order to convert things to, to channel dots with CMYK, you have to convert the image to bit to bitmap, which is either black or white. So everything's really harsh. By having to grow it a little bit, it softens it. And now this is just on top of everything. And so you can see how it really kind of muddies it up, right? Now that could be really good for some things, really bad for other things. You can see how it's not lined up exactly. I can work with the arrow keys. Okay, now it's lined up a little bit better. But like this, it doesn't do good things to my type. It doesn't do good things to my, my little donkey, but it might do really good things to my background which was overpowering before. So let me just move that whole folder down through my layers. Okay, now my little donkey is strong and on top. Now my spot illustration is strong and on top. Now my title flag is strong and on top, but my background still has all those printing dots and those offsets, right? And the yellow is still kind of crazy and off, so I can open up the, the group and move the yellow into into its place. Okay, now here's the beauty of it. I just did it to everything. But if I'm not going to use it on everything, why don't I use it more selectively? So let's turn this off. Let's just call this overall CMYK separations. Let's close these files that it made, which are just the yellows, just the magentas, just the blacks just the cyans and don't save them. Let's take the combined one and not save it because I have it now in this Photoshop. Let's save that Photoshop. And now I'm just gonna do it to my spot illustration. I'm just gonna do a dot separation to that because I might wanna play with that in some aspects. I don't know. Maybe I do, maybe I don't. Other options I have is I can go into this and I can select just the black layer. And then if I want like a shadow underneath my donkey, I can kind of draw one out with my lasso, duplicate it from that black layer. You see how I doubled it up, right? And then I can move it up above and I can duplicate it again and again and again until it gets darker. And now I have a shadow, right? So there's just all kinds of things you can use these dots for. They're like a hand done way of, um, of darkening. So the problem is I like all of that a lot. I can decide what opacity to give it. So maybe I don't want it quite so strong. So I let the original colors come through a little bit more but I want to be careful that it doesn't get too busy. So I'm liking it a little bit stronger. So let me show you how you can run it on individual components. So now I'm going to turn off all these layers before I run the action again. And the only, only layer I want turned on is my spot illustration. And maybe the shadow, because I like the shadow underneath. 
And it'd be funny to do a dot separation of a dot separation. It's very meta. <laughs> and I, I'm even, it actually, I'm going to leave the white, the background white on because that gives the pixels something to help register. And white doesn't have any color, right? So that's not going to output any dots. Okay, now I'm going to, just going to run the exact same action. CMYK full run, select the VHS tape you want, press play. Follow the commands on the, on the remote. <laughs> and it's really easy to make macros in Photoshop. You just go to actions and you press the record button and then it will record everything you do. And then you hit stop and then you can play it back on any file. It's a more advanced thing. It's something I teach in photography. Um, but don't be afraid of it. It's it's pretty fun. Now, is our main goal when we do this to uh, uh, max the colors up, or is it just to like kind of have a little bit of off? Max so yeah, if you want to use this, I want everyone to try it out, right? But it's not going to be appropriate for all of your ideas or your subjects. But I want you to be aware of it because this is what has to happen to any digital image before it's printed. It's just the difference here is these dots are huge. And the dots that our printer uses, this is like 40 dots per inch. The dots our printer uses is 1,640 dots per inch, right? But this is color separation. This is how you print multicolor images out of limited inks. And it's, it's done through channels. The red, green, and blue channels we convert to CMYK, and we'll learn a little bit more about that before the final. Yeah, we're going to ask like, how do I use the channel layers? Like, I don't... Yeah. So what you can do is you can isolate a channel layer. That's how I get the different dots, and then you have to save it as a bitmap, uh, and then you have to convert that bitmap to grayscale, and then you have to replace that that bitmap with your ink color. I got to the There's a lot of steps. Part. That's yeah. <laughs> do we say what we have? And... So now I'm going to take this, I'm going to move these all into a group, and I'm going to call that spot CMYK sep, or separation. And then I can move all of that onto my original. I move it out. I go back to my original. I take that folder. Ah. Oh yeah, this is my original. Drop it on top, move it up above my spot illustration. Right? I have to grow it. Command T, grow the whole folder. Put it in its place. And it's okay if it's a little off, right? That's kind of the charm of it. And you can see how they're all a little different but it's giving them a sparkle and a glow. And now that actually might be a sticker that I like. If I add in the My Little Donkey stuff. This might be the actual t-shirt design I want to put on Redbubble. Or I might turn off certain ones, like I might turn off the black. Or I might make the black layer um, a higher opacity. There's just so many different options. Or I can just take all of this and fade it into my or original illustration, which I think is probably going to look the best. So now I have the dots and my original illustration, but the whole thing looks kind of disoriented and crazy now, right? Which makes for a better sticker, in my opinion. It almost gives it its own drop shadow. And then what I can do, do you guys remember how you made your spot illustration? You made, yeah. <laughs> it was a while ago, it feels like. You made line work, it's assignment seven, you made line work in Illustrator, right? So you have an EPS of your line work. So I'm going to grab that. And I'm going to move that into my poster because maybe just the outline 
of your spot illustration can be a